Welcome to the 2011 World Superbike Championship. I'm Jonathan Green, bringing you all the action from the third round of the season, which comes from the historic Aston Circuit in Northern Holland. Located in the Drenthe region of Holland, the track is steeped in a long history of racing, which goes back to 1925. And it is without doubt one of the most popular venues amongst Dutch and European race fans. Qualifying, BMW were a no-show for Super Bowl 3, with both Corsa and Haslam missing out after Super Bowl 2. Hager was the top Aprilia as he gained a rare front row start. Laverty on the Yamaha made third quickest, while the top two were both Ducatis, Jakob Schmertz in second, and the pole man for the third time in a row, Carlos Checa. Spring conditions for race one, the question was which tyre to choose as the racers lined up on the grid. The softer tyre gave better lap times but might not last the race. The hard tyre might not be as competitive. All eyes were on catching Carlos Checker, who dominated the first two rounds. Let's head now to the start of race one. Here we go then, race one from Assen and a good start from both the Ducatis as they head towards the first corner. Harger didn't get away too well and will Checker lead them into it? No, it looks like Biagi might take it. No, Biagi dies in the second place. Great start for Corsa. Corsa from the third row of the grid is into fourth position. Troy Corsa has an unbelievable start on the number 11. Slots into fourth place just ahead of Jakob oh, Schmertz. Biagi underneath Johnny Ray on full lean. So that's that's a really good move from Biagi to get, get up to uh, Checker. Biagi will know that Checker has the soft tie and he won't want him wanting to get, uh, get a gap. Oh, Johnny oh, Ray, Johnny Ray comes corner. through on Biagi. What a move at Stackenvall, and that is exactly where Biagi went off in practice. Yeah, so he might uh, be a bit tentative into that one, so Johnny took the advantage there, but Biagi again, straight back underneath, and uh, uh, yeah, they don't want to be fighting too much because Checker, once he gets in the groove and get, keeps smooth, uh, could pull a gap on him. Oh, Eugene, Eugene. Lavely up the inside, and he's fighting hard with Tom Sykes right now, but the Aprilia still holding on just behind Corsa, and Sykes just behind him. Here's another look at the move by Ray. Yeah, you come out of the left, you give it a massive squirt just over the underneath. They've got a lot of bank in here where Biagi fell off, so you can run it in hard, and uh, but the risk is to go slightly wide, and they pretty takes him underneath again. Oh, Johnny, oh, under Johnny the first That's a good manoeuvre, that. Lovely move on the world champion. No respect from the young Irishman. See ya. <laughs> yeah, Biagi was trying again to come back immediately, but uh, this is good to see. Johnny didn't really show uh, the potential of running at the front of these races over the weekend, but... Um, uh, you know, he's a racer, so uh, as soon as the lights go out, he's going to grit it. And uh, like from last year's success, the Honda had to be good again this year. And he's not back to full fitness yet, but he's not far off. No, he had the uh, uh, the injury to his left wrist last year, which was quite serious. He had an operation on it, and he had only got about... He's only got about 10 centimetres of movement on the wrist, so that, uh, but the left wrist not too bad, but he crashed again in Phillip Island and really damaged his right one, so he's, he's matched them both up, but uh, it's not ideal. Now, Melandry had a terrible start, and he's down in 10th place, but he's just put in the quickest lap of the race so far, a 137.2, so he could be coming through. Oh, oh that's Leon Aslam. No! Leon Aslam, Smurts, and... Uh, La Scorse. And La Scorse. Well, Leon didn't get a great start, and he was getting a bit frustrated, I think, behind uh, Tom Sykes there, and uh, I think he's just high-sided out of the uh, the corner that Biagi fell off in free practice. Let's have another look. Oh, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. was All strange. Oh, he's, he's lucky not to be collected by Schmertz. The rear just came straight round on him as though uh, 
maybe something was leaking on the bike because uh, usually if it goes there at high sides but it just it just came right round on him an absolute disaster for Haslam third in the championship going into this race Biaggi just a few points behind him and that's really played well for Max Biaggi but not for Leon Haslam the front three now nothing between them look at Tom Tom Sykes is four Tom's across coming. the line and yes he is just put the fastest, fastest lap in 136.6 yeah, the, uh, the Kawasaki looks, uh, looks strong in, in qualifying. I think they found something from Friday to Saturday. And oh, then it's Max Biaggi up the inside of Checker. Johnny Ray. Oh, sorry, Johnny Ray, excuse me. Yes, quite right. And Johnny hits the front. I tell you, it's, um, you know, Johnny will be uh, uh, pleasantly surprised himself, I think, after, after Friday and Saturday to be in this position in the race. Uh, I don't know if Checker just didn't want to be in front uh, at the moment. Uh, you know, he's led most of the races. He's won races. He could see on his board that he got plus zero, plus zero. He wasn't pulling away, so this might be a good opportunity for him. But look at the speed of this Aprilia. Whoa! Look at that. That is incredible speed from Biaggi. I'll tell you something, he won't be looking forward to Monza. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, Max will. <laughs> Type yeah. Sykes all over the back of these three now. And what a start we've had to race one. Oh, Biaggi's wide though there. He has, he's made a mistake Check there. Checker's taken advantage. Here, here comes, comes Sykes. Sykes. No. What a race we've got here at Assen. Nothing between the leaders at all. Ray has a 0.3 of a gap lead over the world champion. But then it's Sykes, Lavadi, Czech, of course, and Fabrizio and Melandri now all battling this for that podium. Sorry, this happened to Donington with Czech. He chose the hard tyre. Remember at the beginning yeah, of the race, backwards. he was really going backwards. And then he found his feet with it and uh, got the, uh, the tyre to get some temperature in it. And uh, now he's starting looking like he's clawing his way back up the, uh, up the pack again now. And he's just looking, getting under Sykes and the last chicane. Maybe it was got Johnny it. Ray who took the gamble from fifth on the grid, thinking that, uh, well, why not? Maybe, but I, I don't think so. I think... Uh, I think with the consistency now, uh, because this is at the point where the tyres do start to go off, and uh, if you're still doing strong lap times, which he is doing, um, I think he should be okay now for the race. Fabrizio oh. now making his move on Checker, and Checker will getting a clear illustration of what his back tyre is doing. Across the line they come then, this is the final lap, the gap is 0.4 between Ray and Biaggi, so Biaggi did a very good lap there, and in fact was four tenths quicker than Ray, he has a chance, but this is his last chance, because this is the final lap, Checker's going to settle for third, Biaggi's got one last throw of the dice. I think Johnny there, because he saw possibly on the lap before, on the pit board, he might have got 0.3 or 0.4 of a gap, and realised that he'd, he'd maybe got it in the bag, but Biaggi then just set a 37-1, which is close to the the lap uh, left record in this race and uh, if, if, if Johnny doesn't just hold it together on this last lap I think Biaggi could have a sniff towards the end of it here we go then final lap James I'll leave it to you to tell me what Max has to do well he's, he's, he's close enough now to, uh, to to realize he can win this race um, uh, but Johnny will be able to hear the Aprilia coming if he gets any closer than this and uh, uh, he'll be blocking him and, uh, and covering his lines uh, Coming into this corner here, the left, and then now the right. That's the last really overtaking opportunity that you do get around this track until the final chicane. Biaggi's not close enough at this point, coming up to the final chicane to have a go at him. And now, I, I, Biaggi's trying, he is trying. You can hear the traction control coming on the Aprilia, but uh, if Johnny keeps this together now through this fast king, coming up to the penultimate corner, Biaggi's not going to be close enough for the final chicane. It's been an interesting race. It started with Checker out front, but he had to settle for third. Johnny Ray came through and managed to get the lead and has held it over Biaggi throughout the race and as he comes down to the final corner the famous Castrol Honda of number four of oh, Johnny Ray makes it three in a row here at Assen and his first win of 2011 what a time to do it for the home Dutch 10 Carter team second place goes to Biaggi third goes to the championship leader check at Melandri finishes fourth Fabrizio does a great job for our start and takes fifth well first and foremost I'm really proud and happy to give Castro Honda their first podium in the world championship uh, this year so my crew worked really hard all weekend and we really made the right decision to to go down the route of um, developing a bike for the race and you know it paid off in this I got a good clean start Got to where my track position early in the race and, you know, led from the, the start. But I kind of was wondering whether to, to let Max pass and let him set the pace because I had a feeling he was just sitting there ready to pounce. But in the end, I made the right decision and, and won the race. I was really happy. So Jonathan Ray's season starts here, you could say? Well, I'm not sure. You know, it's still very tough. You know, the guys at the, the top of the championship are riding well. But I just want to say a big thanks to everyone who's got me here today. Uh, it's been a long, tough winter coming back from an injury. And... Setting myself back in fellow Island, I couldn't have dreamt of being here, you know, two races later. So, you know, thanks very much. 
Johnny Ray then continues his superb run at the Dutch circuit, winning for the third time in a row for his Dutch 10 Carter team. Piaggi put on a strong performance in second, while Checker makes the podium from pole and increases his lead in the championship chase. In race two, temperatures had risen, and that meant some riders might gamble with a softer tyre. Having said that, the top riders were confident of a similar battle at the front, and they included front row starter Noriyuki Haga, who failed to finish race one and was determined to kickstart his season in race two. Let's head to the start then of race two as Johnny Ray goes for the double. Lights go to red. We're away for race two, and Checker gets a flyer on the number seven Ducati. And so too does Haga. Haga takes the whole shot at Assen. Race two, and Biagi moves into third behind Checker. Checker, good move from Biagi. Cool. Oh, yeah, nice move in front of Biagi. He didn't like that much, I'm sure. But Smurts is one and a half seconds slower than the race leader. Mm. Second on the grid. I, I, I just can't. I, I, can't, can't believe, I can't figure it out, really. Well, he's in traffic. That's probably the main reason. But he shouldn't uh, be in that traffic, though, no, second right. on the grid, should Absolutely he? right. You know, so it's really, really strange. And it's, it's not the first time, is it? It must be really frustrating for the team to have such a, uh, uh, you know, the confidence from every qualified position being on the front row to then seeing him in this position one and a half seconds off the pace is to... Uh, Really frustrating. I'll tell you one guy who's hanging in there while he's asking the first is Leon Haslam. He's just yeah, off the, the back, back of this back. Groove, and he's hanging in there. Oh, here comes what Checker. A race. And Checker takes the lead. Excellent move by Carlos Checker to go ahead of the two Aprilias now as they cross the line again. Let's have a look at this lap time by Checker because the 37 oh. 0, that's half a second quicker than Harger. The speed of the Aprilia nearly retaken. And here comes Haslam, Haslam. underneath the Eugene. Good move. Well, this is much better by the pocket rocket Leon Haslam. His lap oh. time, a 37-2. has been duffed up there. He's gone back to fourth. Cammy is on the move. He just did a 36-4. Well, intriguing race, this, because uh, there's so many different riders all capable oh, of getting Fabrizio. through. As Fabrizio goes through on Haga. Good move. Good Haga the Haga's lead this race, and Haga comes back yeah. on him immediately. And, and Cammy is break. pulling away. Yeah. yeah, he's made a break. I'm not sure. Is he making any inroad to, uh, to Melandri? He's got a way to catch him, that's for sure. Doing the Great exactly onboards, Harga now looking back at Fabrizio. Oh, Coming towards the end of the lap again, and Lavity's not done. Checker crosses the line. Biagi does his fastest lap and looks to go for the lead, a 36-6. And these two just eking out a little bit of a gap now to Ray. One second it is. So, similar to race one, two riders involved. But Ray's just done one of his quickest lap times as well, 36-6. So Ray's matching him, and he's one-tenth quicker than Checkers. So, as we saw, Ray was quick in the latter parts of the first race. The, the point now that we're at, the guys are lapping about a half a second quicker than it was in the first race, and that's why the gaps that we're seeing have, have, have accumulated in, the, in this one. But as a race goes on, Johnny gets faster. So we'll and see Melandry's if going with him, though, this time. And I hope that Johnny's got to worry about that, too. Smirts is 2.3 seconds slower than this qualification time. That makes no sense. It doesn't. And uh, if I was team manager, I think I'd have to be asking a few questions because uh, I know I won't get away with it in my team. <laughs> well, you heard it there right from the horse's mouth. And as a two-time world champ, you have every right to say that. And I have to say, I agree with you wholeheartedly. Yeah. Now that's, um, I know he's running around with his teammate, but his teammate is injured. You know, he's running around the same bike, but to, you know, to say that, oh, Marco Melandri's down in the second Melandri. place in the championship. Oh, my dear. He was struggling to keep up, wasn't he? Yeah, he was He was losing time on that group, and... Uh, that's a big blow to the championship. Check is going to have a real field day Cammy now. is going to be delighted with that. Yeah. That's an uncharacteristic mistake from him so far in the championship. He's not really put a foot wrong, he's steady away. You know, the first season of Superbikes, so that's going to be a big blow to him in the championship. Well, especially when he was only 19 points adrift of Checker, who looks likely now to go on to at least take first to second in this race. And so Melandri's big time blown it. So, time running out for Massimiliano Biagi to try and make a move on fellow veteran Carlos Checker. Checker really riding the wheels off that Ducati this year. He's been so dominant. Three wins out of four so far. A decent result in race one and a chance of another win to make it four for the season.
just look at the Ducati on the exit of these tighter corners. Uh, now, from here to the start and finish, it's all fast until the last chicane. So you'll see Biaggi coming out of this corner here, but the uh, Ducati is so good off the initial corner that uh, the Aprilia, once he comes to this fast kink, now Biaggi starts to catch up because of the speed of the Aprilia. Biaggi will be right on his tail, just coming through this fast chicane here. Look, he's always looking really close. But on the tight corners, you look out the last chicane here, it's so good off the last corner that even the speed differential from the Ducati to the Aprilia, because the Ducati gets off so well from there, who's gone slightly wide though there, so Biaggi might have his chance. This is a chance now for Biaggi. He's come as Here, close he, as comes. He's Here he comes. He comes alongside Carlos Checker. They're side by side as they head down with three to go. And Biaggi hits the front in Assen. He's got and him. Does, oh, does he go wide? No, he hangs on to it. Good stuff. Yeah. As I'm saying, the Ducati gets off so well on these corners that it actually uh, it, it makes up for the speed uh, uh, deficit that he's got because by the time the Aprilia does come in with the speed uh, advantage, the Ducati makes up five yards on the exit. Now, this is going to get interesting as these two battle because Carlos won't be done yet for sure. Here's the overtake. He came alongside him, a bit of a wiggle out of the last corner, and that was all he needed. The Aprilia power powers past the Ducati. Check has got the run. He has got the run. Look at him go. If you just notice, Max is already covering his lines with two laps to go. And uh, with covering your lines, you go into the corners deeper. And Check is going to have a go here for sure. Here we go. Definitely. Oh, Carlos oh. holds him off. Go on. That is some manoeuvre. Yeah, it was some manoeuvre. See ya. But look at the speed of the Aprilia now. Now he comes back. Look at the speed. He's going he's gonna to have to go for it here. No, this no. is the final lap. He hasn't got it. So it's hats off. Here we go, stand up and wait for Checker to do it, or Biaggi. Checker's really laying down some rubber now. Biaggi started to cover his lines already with two laps to go and he was really sacrificing his exits. And the, the Ducati off the corner, like I was saying before, is so good that uh, Checker was even able to keep with him through, through the fast set, uh, chicane section. So Checker's gonna do it, surely, unless he makes a big mistake. Biaggi's gonna be close, but not close enough. What a race, what a weekend. Two corners to go for Carlos Checker, the pole man. And on the podium in race one, but now finishes off with delight. Oh, Beautifully poised race by Checker. A wheelie out of the fast kink there. He's really just got his head down here. Biaggi's got, not got an answer for it. If, if Checker just holds his head on the brakes, he's got it. And the crowd go absolutely wild because Carlos Checker has just put on a masterclass of motorcycle racing to win race two and take his fourth win of the year in front of the champ. How to rub his nose in it or what? That was fantastic racing. Biaggi gave it his all. But in the end, had to settle for second. Haslam has held off uh, Lavani, Fabrizio and Harga to take fifth place. Well, it's a fantastic beginning, no? And this race was amazing. I think the key point was to choose the soft tyre. We get that extra grip and at the end, the tyre was, uh, was good, was, was constant, no? This was the question mark. Then uh, we, we, I was trying to, to pull uh, Max to put some gap between me and him, but he was quite strong behind. Then I make some mistake, uh, beginning a chicane, he overtake me and I, I tried to overtake him again. And when I had the opportunity, I did make it. And then uh, I push as, as I can on last lap and I was able to finish first. No, winning here, watching the race one for me was a big surprise and a big, uh, big satisfaction. Now, you said that the, you think the Ducati will be competitive at all tracks. The next one is Monza, ultra-fast circuit. How do you think you'll go there? Well, we try to, to defend uh, as much as we can in Monza. We know we will be struggling, but we'll see what we can get. No, I think for us, maybe a victory can be top five in Monza, but we'll see. You never know. Uh, now we, we did a very good starting. We are working for the next races, and for sure in my mind already is Monza, and we'll see what we can do there. A consummate performance from Carlos Checker, who chose his moment perfectly, leaving Biaggi with nowhere to go, and stormed on to victory number four from six races, and now increases his lead in the championship as they head next to Monza. Biaggi's two second places keep the champ in the hunt, and likewise, after injuries in Australia, Johnny Ray is off and running as his campaign begins in earnest. In Supersport, Italy's Luca Scassa had won the first two races and was on pole for Assen. 
but there were plenty of others queuing up for a piece of that glory, including Scatter's teammate Chaz Davis. The race, though, had two false starts when incidents involving Sam Lowe's and Marco German stopped the race twice. With a third and final race start, Davis was alongside his teammate Scatter, the two Yamahas going head to head for the race win. Chaz and Robin Harms as well. Away they go, not a good start from Forry. Good one, though, by the pole man. Away they go down towards the first corner here at Assen. And who's going to take the whole shot? It looks as though Sam, Sam Lowe's has got away. Ooh, Scatter. just gets uh, Scatter, knocks across his bowels there. And the Italian takes the lead. Somebody going wide there, but it looks as though Sam Lowe's and Scatter have got away well. Oh, oh no! Oh, big, big, big off! High side like you wouldn't believe at Assen, and Sam Lowe's is very much down. That was a big, that was a big crash. Oh, red flag. Yeah. Oh, can they win a third? And go lights away. They go, and Scatter does get away well. But so too does Gino Rea around the outside, the number four in the orange helmet, trying to get round and into a position of maybe second place. Yes, he does. Great start from Gino Rea. Brock Parks, the number 23. Oh, Ooh, another big another accident. Coming out the last time. corner again. Another guy down. This could be another uh, red flag situation here again. Yeah, it will be. It's German that's down. It will be, yeah. There's people running around to the circuit and everything again. Oh, another high side out on the last chicane and taking people out. That's similar to Smertz and Guintoli in the, in the silver bikes. I think it's, yeah, Marco German. Oh, is it him? Oh, no. No, no. That's what you don't need. See this? You know. Marco goes down. He takes Bas uh, Bastian Schusser with him. Yeah. away they go and Scatter does start well but Gino Ria has done it again he's round the outside and looking to try and steal that hole shot fifth to second, second he's again. done it again oh Ooh, and he looked over Scatter Scatter two pushed up, and that has also Brock. pushed one of Brock Parks I think it was going wide but again it's Chaz Davis for a bit better start much better start from the former world champion Fabian Faure yeah, Brock went on uh, onto the grass then. He's, he's way down now, so uh, he's uh, hopefully... That's really unfortunate. And what it happened was Lucas Scassa wasn't expecting young Gino to come through. He sat up a little bit, and that put off, as we see, Praia got a good start. The uh, Portuguese rider, he's got just ahead of Robin Harms of Denmark. He oh, also raced. Foray on Scassa. Good move. Yeah, nice move. Oh, Whoa, and that's a mistake. mistake. Oh, they're going to almost touch there. And that could have ended in tears, but it hasn't, thankfully. Just lost a couple of tenths there on the leaders from, from that manoeuvre, but uh, I don't think we've seen the last of Foray in this race. Or oh, Scassa, here it is. Now that's what Marino's been trying to do. This is much oh! better. Oh, no, 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 oh, my no, God. no. Scassa completely got the braking wrong there. And he's taken out. He's just gone French? straight oh. into the back of Marino. Two race wins and then a DNF. What a championship this is going to turn out to I be. don't know what Scatter was thinking. He was breaking for that left-hander and completely got his breaking marker completely wrong. Found himself in no position to move anywhere, look. Oh, oh. He, did, he just he, he did a complete stop. Here. Yeah, the rear wheel was off the floor. That, that was a big, big mistake from Scatter to misjudge that like that. The Kawasaki holding on for dear life now, but it's going to be the Yamaha. Not Scatter's Yamaha as it was the previous two times, but for the first time in his career, Chaz Davis of Wales and Great Britain headed for victory. What a moment for this tall, lanky figure. A super guy takes a look over his shoulder, but he's monstered them, these boys, and he's taken the ball by the horns, and he's going for it. Just a few more corners to go for Chaz Davis. James Tozen alongside me knows exactly what this feels like to be a young Englishman on the way up and take victory at Assen. He got his first podium here. But now Chaz Davis is going to take his first victory at Assen in Holland. What a time to do it and what a time. That says it all. He bangs the tank. Absolutely fantastic result for him. And Brock Parks is hanging in there. He's, He's got going to hold on. Yes. Brock Parks takes third. Great, Great right. result. A brilliant win for Davis, his first ever in the category and the perfect time to pull it off with his teammate Scasser ending off in the dirt. The brilliant run from Brock Parks in third place also means the championship has now been blown wide open yet again. Assen also marked the start of the FIM Superstock 1000 World Championship with a host of young riders from over a dozen countries and several different manufacturers competing.
Last year was completely dominated by BMW with the Ayrton Badovini winning nine of the 10 races. But BMW wouldn't have it so easy in 2011 with Kawasaki bringing eight of their all new ZX-10Rs to compete. While Ducati returned in strength to try and regain the title they won two years before. But it was a BMW on pole position with the new factory rider Sylvain Barrier of France taking his first pole position in the series, having finished sixth overall last year. The race itself, though, despite a hard-fought effort by Barrier, was all about Ducati, as two Italians, Davide Giuliano and Daniello Petruzzi, went toe-to-toe -to -toe for the whole race. Giuliano, the Roman, was just holding off Petruzzi at the line to take his first win of the season, with Petruzzi second and Sylvain Barrier of France in third. Assen produced another classic bathed in the spring Dutch sunshine. Now it's the chance of the oldest circuit on the calendar, Monza in Italy, to put on an equally spectacular show around the famous Royal Park just outside Milan. That's the location of round four. Until then, from me, Jonathan Green, goodbye for now.